Hey everyone, it's Aaron with Hail Varsity. I am joined by Brandon Vogel, also of Hail Varsity, but he isn't Greg, which for those of you who typically watch our recruiting question of the week, you might be wondering where Greg is. Well, he's taking a much needed vacation. So I am joined by Brandon. How are you? I'm well, not Greg tends to be what I'm most known for. So I'll do my best. It's a, it's a, a I'm trying to think of the right word. It's a kind of game-changing week, I think, for college athletics. Um, one way or another, are we ready for this? No, but it's going to happen, so here we go. And if you're wondering what that might mean, because a lot of news has broken in Nebraska recently, it is not about the athletic director, although Nebraska may have an athletic director this week. But the game-changing part really is about name, image, and likeness. And here's the thing. a lot of We've gotten so many great questions, but one that has come up here and there in the last few months has been about name, image, and likeness and how it will affect recruiting. So we are going to focus on that today, knowing how, how monumental this week will be. So this question really didn't come from one specific person, but for many of you watching, you'll think, oh, I asked that question because you, many of you have over the last few months, like I said. So there's really two pieces here that I'm going to talk about with Brandon. One is how recruits themselves are going to benefit from name, image, and likeness, but then also how universities will use this to their advantage. So first and foremost, let's just start with the how will schools benefit from this. Obviously, the schools that have legislation in their states, that's a big deal for them because they, they kind of already have a game plan ahead of them, or at least you hope so. But then the NCAA is supposed to be passing something to at least allow for everyone who doesn't have state legislation to be able to do something. It's, it's very uh, chaotic as we get closer to J July 1st. Brandon, what has kind of been your take as the NCAA is trying to make this thing happen and that July 1st deadline is, is right there? Yeah, so there, there are six states that are were scheduled to be ready to go on July 1st. They are ready to go. That's when their legislation goes into effect. The NCAA, and this will never not be hilarious to me, um, <laughs> has put forth kind of temporary guidelines. They're going to be voted on on Wednesday, which uh, if you're looking at a calendar, that's one day before these other six states are able to jump in full feet, you know, both feet into the name image like this waters. Nebraska is not one of those six states in that its legislation is effective July 1, but it can be. This was pretty smart on their part. Uh, they just set a timetable of like the next four years, um, though individual schools can can jump on it. And of course, Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma is the same way. Um, and of course, that's what they will do because everyone is viewing this as a potential recruiting advantage. Um, though with this NCAA temporary policy, I think it kind of removes some of that that first mover advantage a little bit, you know, and, and of course, the NCAA wanted to avoid this, where you would have, you know, 20% of your schools able to pitch to recruits, hey, come here, you can make money, and the other 80% can't. This temporary policy, which virtually has to be approved on Wednesday, I can't see any way it's not, um, eliminates that. So it gets interesting for me in a recruiting standpoint, and there's like a vast amount of like, this is new for everyone. I don't think anyone who tells you it's gonna go like this is probably uh, lying a little bit. At least that part of it, the, the first mover part is, is gone theoretically with this. So that becomes interesting. And in a lot of ways, I think this becomes that a lot like recruiting has been, who can put together the best sales pitch of, Here's what's in place for you to capitalize on your name, image, likeness rights, which you can do anywhere. Um, but here's why we're better at it. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how how ready teams are to go right away this week. Good thing for Nebraska is they were always kind of pointing to this date as being ready to go. So they do have a little bit of a head start. And if you are wondering about what Brandy was talking about with Nebraska and Oklahoma, again, the states both have legislation that goes into effect July 1st. The difference is that each school has the option to jump on name, image, and likeness on that date on July 1st. But if they don't, they have until a certain date in the future where they have to make that um, a possibility for their student athletes. In the case of Nebraska, 
uh, prior to his departure, but I assume the new athletic director will feel the same. But Bill Moose had said Nebraska has every intention of starting to allow its student athletes to profit off of their name, image, and likeness on July 1st. The big thing is, is there have been some Florida, legis Florida legislatures who've been arguing that states are bragging, that this is already kind of, you're seeing this. Well, of course, because this is a big deal. Schools are going to use this on the recruiting trail. They're going to, they're going to say, hey, if you come to Nebraska, for instance, you might not be the quarterback, but you could make some money because there are plenty of businesses, especially small businesses that will be, a, that will be interested in partnering with you. You think of like an Omaha Steaks, they may be interested in part partnering with one of the linemen. It would be a really natural fit. So if they're watching, you're welcome for the, I'm sure the <laughs> thing you've already thought about. Um, but I think one thing that gets lost a lot here is we think a lot of these sponsorship deals, but it's not just that. Recruits will be able to keep YouTube channels that they're profiting off of. They'll be able to keep TikToks where they're a part of the creator fund. If they're already making money off of things like their Instagram accounts, they'll be able to continue doing that. I think a lot about someone like Lexi's son who came to Nebraska with a very large Instagram following. I mean, heck, Lexi's son had been at the ESPYs because she was the Gatorade player of the year. So she had a lot of attention on her and her social was built because of that. And she capitalized on it and continued to grow that in her time at Nebraska. She is an example of somebody where you can point to a recruit and say, you can now take that, that audience that you've already built, continue to build it and make some money off of it. That is going to be the big pitch. Now, the thing with name image likeness there still has to be rules for instance you're not going to be able to pay an athlete for performance you can't tell a baseball player or a softball player if you bat 400 we'll give you x amount of dollars it's not a bonus situation but with that said there are trying to put guardrails in place where a school can't just say to recruit x if you what i mean by a school i guess a business cannot partner with Recruit X and say, if you commit to Nebraska or whomever, we'll give you $100,000. That would be, that would be a violation, e even in name, image, and likeness. Like that is just against amateurism, at least keeping as much of amateurism here, but it will change the game. So the biggest thing for me is, and we talk about what this means for recruits, if they are building social followings now in high school, it will encourage them to do that because that will pay off for them depending on the situation they get themselves in once they get to a school. So I think that at least in branding, you can tell me what you think. That's really intriguing is that recruits should start building their brands now when they're in school because they'll be able to profit off of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's going to become the easiest path for this. You know, I'll, I'll be surprised if you're, you know, watching your local news and you see uh, an ad for Nebraska's current running back, you know, at a car dealership. Like, I mean, technically you could do that, but I just think social media, um, influencer type of deals, uh, original content via, you know, YouTube or whatever it may be, becomes where those athletes live already. And it mm -hmm. becomes a, a much easier and easier to understand the process. And it's probably less time consuming, you know? Yeah, you gotta take time to say, create a new YouTube video every week or however they decide to do it, but it's different than spending, you know, two hours shooting a commercial. So that seems like probably, especially early on as everyone's trying to figure this out for themselves, the easiest um, way to gain entry to, to these athletes and what they're able to do name image likeness wise. I mean. I think by this time a year from now, I think Lexi Sun is going to be one of the poster children for oh, what this what this looks like. And now the interesting thing about that is, I think that would be the case for her. You mentioned her social following and how she's got kind of a huge jump start on everybody. Uh, I think that would be the case for her at Texas. You know, it'll be good for Nebraska because they'll be able to say, "Look what a Nebraska athlete was able to do." Um, but she's going to be in a tier that I think there's not going to be a ton of people like there are going to be some people that make real, real money from this. And it's going to be a handful of people in the country across sports. It's going to be largely determined by their social following um, and how desirable they are on that front. Where I think Absolutely. Nebraska. Well, really quick, think Trevor Lawrence. He came into Clemson with a huge following. So that initial boost, I mean, would have paid off exponentially for him. Yeah. 
where I think Nebraska could have a potential advantage um, is so you've got your tier players up here. Like if you're the leading Heisman Trophy candidate, you're going to be in good shape. But Nebraska could pitch a very devoted fan base, um, kind of singular attention on Nebraska athletics. Um, you know, there's there's no, as we always talk about, there's no pro teams competing. Um, although everyone who follows college athletics typically has their pro teams that they enjoy as well. Um, but that, that's it. I think at Nebraska, you could go down the list more. So if your top people are up here, your top earners, which is still strange to talk about in a college context, we're just not used to it. Um, you have your top earners, but what's it mean for guys who's like 30, 40 down the list? Does it, is it more valuable at Nebraska than it is at, say, Miami, where a Florida business could choose a Gator, could choose a Hurricane, could choose a Seminole, could choose a Knight, uh, so on down the list, you know? Um, I, I think if, if I were Nebraska, and again, like, we're all kind of fumbling around in the dark here a little bit, like, that's probably what I would look towards because, again, I think a lot of this comes down to everyone's going to be able to pitch an NIL and the ability to make money who does it best is what's going to influence recruiting the most. I mean, it sincerely goes back to Nebraska pushing always the belief that it has the best fans in college athletics, because this is going to really prove that point to a degree, because all of these fans, a lot of them have businesses. A lot of them have influences in spaces where they can, um, you know, make a difference in a way where if you're a recruit and you see that in Nebraska, you know, cornerback, and I didn't say quarterback, cornerback or defensive back is, you know, making X amount of dollars, but that same position is only making, you know, this, this much over here, that might be persuasive because I, I know that like there are people who will be critical of this, but I do want to remind people that student athletes, some of, some of these individuals come from um, situations where they're just trying to provide support for family members. They're just trying to get by. They're trying to take advantage of a time in their life where people know who they are. They know their name. This is not going to be the case forever. Uh, heck, as the NCAA itself says, most of its athletes go pro in something other than sports. So this is the time where they can be taking advantage of this, maybe putting a little money aside. So if they want to start a business of their own someday, or just have the little bit of comfortability when they graduate, like th that is a... Of course, my phone is ringing. It's it's not because of uh, no one's calling me to tell me any breaking news on name image and likeness <laughs> just yet. But anyone who watches these videos knows that between me and Greg, our phones just seem to always seemingly ring right when we're recording these videos. So long story short, I think that this is going to change recruiting. I don't think it's going to change it completely. I don't think some somebody's going to suddenly go, I don't want to go to Alabama anymore because of X or, oh, I don't want to do this. I do think it, it will make a difference for schools like Nebraska or maybe even smaller schools who normally wouldn't have been in consideration for somebody who now goes, not only will I get to play and get that playing time, but I'll also get to make some money. It could change, it could change rosters a bit and it'll be fascinating to see what it looks like a year from now and also to see when our first recruit makes the comment I picked school a partially because of name image and likeness and what they're doing somebody yeah. will say it <laughs> yeah it's gonna get super interesting I mean I think the succinct way for me to kind of make sense of it as I look at how this impacts recruiting and, and I do think you know this is a big change but the impact on recruiting is going to be a little bit more gradual. Um, but does being the, say, second string tight end at Nebraska have more potential for earnings via NIL than being the second string tight end at Florida? You know, that's, that's a big question. And, and, I, and I think, you know, it, it could. Um, but as, as you mentioned, does, does being the first string tight end at Arkansas State have even more value than that. And these are all dominoes that we're still, you know, still have, still have to fall. And it's going to take a little while to figure it out, but there's some interesting questions. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, like I said, I know so many of you have asked and these questions will continue. So please, if you have additional questions on name, image, and likeness, obviously, obviously understanding that like we are kind of learning 
on the fly with everyone else. That's just going to be the name of the game with this for a while, but we're happy to continue to have the conversation. So wherever you're watching this, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, leave a comment below and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Greg will be back next week. So make sure you ask all the really tough questions for him. We'll lob them his way, but you can also tweet at Hale Varsity anytime to get, you know, your questions in if that's your if that's your preference but by the time you hear from us in this particular video a week from now name image and likeness will be officially a thing so i guess the only thing i can say is buckle up it's going to be a wild ride i because i'm taking the notebook for greg will have more on this topic this evening at hillvarsity.com so make sure you head to hillvarsity just bookmark the, the notebook 6 p.m central sunday through thursday but more on this topic tonight Brandon, thank you for pinch hitting. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'll leave you with this. I think by this time next week, next video, Nebraska should probably have the number one recruiting class in the country. So. And if you disagree, like, again, leave your comments because I will, I will give them specifically to Greg. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, everyone. Thank you so much as always. And we will be back next week. We'll talk to you later.